Bong bang 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 pandem and all do it don't welcome welcome to dance me tv if you're new to the channel please go ahead hit the subscribe button for us you know i mean today we have breaking news you know i mean certified news as you see in the display on your screen the video showing on the screen you know i mean brian messi you know i mean in a messy situation you know i mean down there in jamaica you know i mean so right now killer does a give thanks to life and who wouldn't give thanks to life after a drastic accident like that you know what i mean as i see the car and everything display that's what taking place down there in jamaica with brian you know what i mean so now the killer out and giving thanks boss a little tweet giving thanks to life you know what i mean we actually can do the thing again you know what i mean so you know what i mean if you're new to the channel go ahead for us hit the subscribe button you know what i mean this is caribbean boys outside you know what i mean doing the caribbean flavor doing the caribbean flex you know what i mean doing the caribbean entertainment wise you know what i mean yeah dance me to out representing so go ahead hit the subscribe button up next you know we have ninja man break silent you know what i mean and we have a video of brian before the entire accident so stay tuned relax and take in what take place don't forget to hit the subscribe button for us you know what i mean i'm out it was written to address all who have a problem with the previous letters insisting that i'm not intelligent enough to articulate with such intellect and more sometimes intelligence is not proven until it is absolutely necessary education never rears its head until it's inexorable and wisdom is not observed until it is established sometimes you have a message and if you don't relay that message through the appropriate channel so it's delivered effectively it can get lost in transition I have been fortunate enough to find the right person to deliver my messages in exactly the way I intended, which is greatly appreciated. So please do not attack or persecute the messenger, as these are entirely my thoughts. There are a couple of things I would like to address in this my fourth letter. First, I would like to communicate to Queen Africa as she has leveled a bit of venom toward me. Queen, I've always had respect for you because of the way you presented yourself to us in the industry and to the world at large. You stood for truth and rights and carried yourself in such a way that we had no choice but to applaud your existence. But lately, you have been operating outside that realm. Queen, please remember what Rastafari means. It's a religious movement among black people that teaches eventual redemption of black people and their return to their African roots. Rastafarians have distinctive codes of behavior and dress, including the wearing of dreadlocks, the smoking of marijuana, cannabis, the rejection of Western medicine, and adherence to a diet that excludes a number of things that other members of society finds palatable. We've always seen you as a Rastafarian queen who carried those traits, who spoke upliftment and strength, but this is not the Queen Africa we have been seeing of late. Again, let me reiterate that if you had not mentioned me in the way you did, I would not feel it necessary to say this to you. I do not know what is happening in your life, but you are out in the public space addressing people in ways that are unbecoming of you, using words that a respected Rastafarian queen has no business using. Everyone has ups and downs in life. It is simply called life. Life happens for all of us, but everyone should be able to pull into themselves when going through certain abnormalities until they can achieve normalcy. I have nothing but time, so I will use this time to keep you and others like you in my prayers. Please find a better way of getting your message across without acrimony. I am not mad at you. This is just letting you know that that you are losing the respect of the very people you empowered. Speak your peace in the appropriate arena, one that I am sure exists in the Rastafarian world. Then maybe you will find the support you seek. Secondly, I want to speak on what's going on with Marion Hall. A lot of people are trying to crucify Marion Hall for making the decision to perform at some fest. My message to her is this. Do not let anyone stop you from doing what you do. I am sure you did not tell anyone that you will be going into that space as Lady Saw. Everyone saw you on an entirely different mission than Lady Saw was on. God blessed you with the talent, the persona and the style that you have to go by the waysides and edges and be wanderers to come go to the dance hall get one go to the go-go club get two go wherever god takes you long as you shake your booty in the name of jesus 
When Papa Sal and Luton and Stitchy went on non-gospel stage shows, no one complained about them. Remake all your songs you did as Lady Saw into gospel and burn down some fest. Please separate yourself from the constant quarreling that has become the norm for too many females in dance hall. It's just confusion. Too many of them need to spend more time in the studio honing their craft and less time bickering with each other. Back in the day, females in the space had their share of disagreements, but it was mostly played out on the stage or in the recorded music. There wasn't that much dissension, and if there was, it was handled differently. The females from the 90s and before were not making the kind of money that the women of today are making in music. Yet, the bars have been lowered to a level that's below the snake's belly. Thirdly, Papa San was my biggest rival in the early days, and then Lieutenant Stitchy. But off the stage, the rivalry was non-existent. Super Cat and Early B nurtured us. They raised us up in the business. They did not try to stop our growth. There were many others who watched out for the new arrivals. They were not bitter toward them. A hundred thousand dollars back then is equivalent to a million now. We could purchase homes and invest in things to fall back on when the rainy days came. We need to make the industry stronger, not weaken it. All the other genres have gone past us. Producers should stick to making reggae and dance or music. There are too many crossover rhythms being made and they're not being made well enough to compete against the people who are making them authentically. They're not made to last. Too many computer-generated beats are being made. We need to use real musicians playing real instruments so we can recapture the essence of what reggae and dancehall truly are. I'm not saying we should not evolve, but do so within our genre. Growth is good, but diversion is destroying the industry. Dancehall and reggae was our biggest earners alongside tourism, much of which was generated by the music that drew people to our little island. Dancehall and reggae was seven days per week. The age range in dancehall attendance was from the youngest to the oldest. Now it's basically young people, most of which can't buy more than one drink for the night. Think about that. Dancehall needs people of all ages to keep growing. Bob Marley is still our biggest artist in the world, and it's largely because of the message in his music and the respect people have for him, which is why he's so loved and why his legacy continues to grow in leaps and bounds. I am imploring our artists, producers, musicians, and promoters to return to dancehall and reggae. Modernize it, yes, but make changes gradually as we maintain its authenticity. Bring back the music. Thanks for listening. I'm... Oh, my God.